Hi, thanks for checking out our channel here. So this is going to be a little overview uh, video on this particular unit. This is a uh, American Farmworks 120 mile unit. This is uh, American Farmworks is the brand that sold at Tractor Supply. And uh, they sell, sell a lot of these uh, 120 mile units. The so Zariba 100 mile, Blitzer, Red Snapper 100 mile. Uh, any of these big black case units that are 100 miles are all the same as this 120 mile. And where they get the extra 20 miles from, but that's what they put on there so that's what that's what we'll call it anyways we fixed this unit up for the customer uh we've been waiting and waiting and waiting on parts for these things um now here's a the good and the bad of these units um the good thing is they're readily available you can go to any track supply typically and buy one of these things uh you know a lot of farm and fleet stores chain farm stores even some co-ops and stuff might carry this zariba blitzer brand but um so, and they've been around, this model's probably been around for 20, 25 years, probably the late 90s when they came out a variation of this unit. Um, now, that's a good thing. You can get them readily available or buy them, and they're not super expensive, you know, compared to the, some of the brands. That, this is a 6.7 joule output, probably, and it says 10 joules stored. So, if you compare it, price-wise this is about 225 bucks give or take 20 bucks i would say every time you put the tax on it and everything um <clears throat> now if you compare it to like a uh, gallagher this is 10 store jewels like a gallagher um like uh m800 for example it's one of their units that, that's an eight store jewel like 4.9 output so it's different but that price of that gallagher m800 is about 350 400 bucks between three and four hundred dollars for one of those on average maybe a little probably closer to 400 so 400 dollars versus 275 250 bucks 225 bucks for this one and they get more power that's why people go this route because the price point is there you know it's just a more more powerful less money kind of thing and um so the now the downside of them is not the greatest built units um i mean the, the biggest flaw they have with them from a repair guy standpoint, is the weak point in them are the transformers. Now they'll work really good for a while, and then they'll one day just randomly quit on you. Not no lightning, no surges, no weirdness going on. Just one day they're working, next day they're not. You know, there's just uh, no rhyme or reason to them. Like this particular unit's a 20 manufacture date uh, 2018. The first two numbers is the year it was built, so 2018 is when this was built and uh the, the the transformer gone bad it had some other issues with the board as well now we don't stock the factory transformers because they're kind of the weak point uh till now we can get them you know of course and and are easily swap over but usually when the transformer goes there's usually more wrong with the unit than just the transformer the primaries primary side of the transformer is really weak now let me go grab a let me go grab the transformer that came out of this one Hold on. Right, here's, here's a transfer that went inside here. Now, see it's set. It's in the case, the way it's positioned, sitting like this. So this is your output that goes to your fencing ground right here. It bolts to the case like this. When it's in there, it's the, there's a these bolts come through and it bolts to the case. But here's a primary side right here where, where the power cord and board and everything plugs in at. It sits about like right, right about there. See these vents right here? These little air vents. There's some on the back as well. Well, these transformers get really hot on the primary side. There, that's the weak point to them. So to kind of prolong the life of the thing, they put these air vents here to let the heat come out. Now this this case is used on the uh, currently on the 200 mile or 240 mile version as well. That's why there's there's uh, vents up here because the 200 mile or 240 mile has double the guts. It's got a two transformers that sit on top of each other like that. Two sets of boards that run across here, and two capacitors, two of everything. And they got a bunch of jumper wires tying everything together. So that's why there's air vents up here. So they, these hopefully prolong the life of the transformer, so that way these the primary, does, if it gets hot, like, hopefully some of the heat comes out. I guess. Well, they uh, the reason why they go bad typically, people will buy these units because they got. Well, they say I got 120 miles of fence, or that's what things rated for 120 miles of, of fence. Now, 
take that into consideration what that means i hate that model draining crap it's really a marketing thing and it gets people in trouble sometimes they buy the wrong size unit look at the jewels of you don't look at that mileage stuff i mean it, it is a number to look at but not don't take it the take it the grain of salt that 120 miles is a single strand of high tensile 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire single strand and it's perfectly clean and perfect ground system pie in the sky rating if you had 120 miles of single strand one run in one direction you know three feet off the ground and ran for 120 miles clean this thing would do it supposedly would do that 120 mile long now it's not multi-wire you know multi-wire you know or different kind of wire you know netting wire um smaller gauge aluminum you know multi-strand high tensile all that modern stuff just goes right out the window so you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt now people will buy these units because they 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 want a big charter but they don't want to spend a lot of money on a better one so they'll, they'll get one of these which you know they're not bad they're just I don't expect to get 10 years out of one maybe five you know give or take um if you're lucky now the, the reason why the transformers go bad and why they get so hot is because the way that these things are designed every brand deals with this it has this same issue <clears throat> but different brands deal with it in different ways is if you got like this particular model is trying to put out you know say 120 miles of, of charge and you've already got on quarter mile of fence I don't know say 10 acres or 25 50 acres or whatever you know a pretty short run for what this thing this thing would probably do like 300 acres with no problem if it, of multi-wire fence maybe 250 acres of multi-wire uh, fence and it'd be just fine but if you only got on say 10 20 acres it's still going to try to put out 200 acres worth of power but it can't because it's, you don't have enough fence out there to let the unit put it out all out there so all the extra power it can't get rid of gets built up as heat you know on these on this this transform on the primary side because it's, it's trying to shove all that power out of it and it sort of can't get rid of all it because there's not enough fence out there to let the unit get rid of all this energy so all that heat gets built up as i mean yeah it gets built up as heat on the inside of the unit which is not a super big deal but this transformer gets really hot on there and uh eventually the primary side of the wine is going to get too hot eventually it's going to burn open internally and a wine is going to break loose inside you can't see it you know of course but you'll test it and it tests bad and um and the thing will just just shut off on you just randomly quit and then when that quits all that power it can't get through the transformer so something's got to give something's going to pop on the inside and usually a scr or something and there's going to short out and you, you you know it won't look burnt up it won't look shorted out but you do all the tests on stuff and you find okay that, that stupid little part's bad they go hand in hand together with and this thing fails so what we do um is we retrofit a different transformer into these things we don't we have a custom built transformer that we use in a whole bunch of other models besides this 120 and 240 mile we use them in old gallagher's old speed rights and etc and they work really really well we drill we get all lined up where we want to put the transformer at we drill some holes run some long bolts we actually and a nut we bolt that transformer to the plastic case and uh works really well I haven't had any issues doing that to run for years with no problems excluding lightning i guess now the, the transformer that we use does not have a light bulb on it like this one's got the little circuit board built in the transformer has a little certain light bulb on there um the transformer that we have is just a basically that just a just a transformer on its own little circuit board has four wires to come out of it two that go to the board two that go to your fence and ground and so that's what we use inside these things and when they do go bad a lot better quality they cost about 10 15 dollars more than a factory one does but the reliability behind it is 10 times or more the quality i don't know if it's because the, the built in the states have a little higher standards of quality i think i don't know where these things are built at um don't know don't know if it's built here in the states or overseas somewhere but um don't like them we don't stock them typically we can get them but we don't stock them typically um that's how other brands get around this is they will use a um depends on the brand different brands do different things some brands will use like a multi-core transform they have like four five six seven whatever windings inside the transformer to kind of share the load and, and dissipate the heat inside other ones they'll uh, do that but they'll also pot the uh, the transformer to pot the whole winding in an epoxy so it, it kind of just binds it together so it can't break loose i guess it could still but 
not very common. And then the other thing people, some brands will do when you get to like the mid-size and larger on some brands, they will do like this, different brands call it different things, like Gallagher calls it adaptive control, Cyclops calls it power on demand, um, different brands call it different things. Basically what it means, and you, you're going to pay more for this type of unit, I mean, so, but you're going to get a lot longer life, but people are on a budget these days because price of everything's through the roof on everything. So it has, so people, you know, will buy this unit. You know, just know that you might get two years, might get five, six years, but you're not going to get ten. I mean, maybe you will, but eh, it's real rare. But they are repairable. When we when we get done with it, it will be a lot better unit when we get done with it. But going back to like the power on demand and adaptive control units that are made by other brands, basically what those units will do, and to do it through like software and chips and monitoring and this feel of the resistance that's hooked up to it. Say this was a Gallagher M1100, you know, a $500 unit, give or take. It's a 11 store joule, 7.7 .7 output joule unit. So a little bit stronger than this, but about twice the price of this one. But how they, what they do, they use a combination of adaptive control and the multi-core kind of transformer setup on the inside. And what the adaptive control means, it when it's hooked up to a fencing ground, even if it's a large unit made for, say, 300 acres, and you've only gone on, say, 40 acres or whatever, it feels, okay, not a whole lot of resistance, not a whole lot of fence hooked up to me, so it's only going to put out what it feels. So it might put out 20%, 30%, 10%, whatever it feels it needs to put out based on what it feels that it's connected to. <clears throat> so if you have a short run or or not or, or a bigger run with cleaner fence it might only use you know, between 20 and 40 percent or whatever it just it feels it needs to use but as you as you add more wire or you get more grass on the line whatever it will feel that resistance increase so it will increase the output voltage and our output joules and everything to push more to the fence that way it um uh puts more power when it needs to but as soon as you burn the grass down and you fix your sh fix the short of the fence whatever it will feel less resistance well then it lowers its energy back down so then it doesn't run as hot parts last longer but you pay more for that stuff so you kind of you know kind of get to pay for on some stuff but on the some models that don't have that adaptive control like a Gallagher M800 a Cyclops a Champ you know something like that or a Power Wizard PW6000 you know or uh, I don't know, pick another brand of the mid-size units. They'll use like a multi-stage or multi-core transformer as like multiple layers inside the transformer to kind of dissipate the heat through some stuff. I'm trying to see if I have a uh, transformer like that. Give me just a second to go take a peek here. Uh, this is kind of an exaggerated version, but I'll show you what it is. Now look at the size of this transformer. This thing is massive. This is using a Cyclops Super. It's a 16 store joule, like 12 output, so about double what this thing is roughly. But this is your output. This is your input. See, so he's got four wires on it. So it's a multiple, multi-layer, multi-stage, whatever you want, uh, transformer coil. And also, they use a lot of copper inside their transformers. And they also block it up in a big thing of epoxy. I mean, this stuff is hard as a rock, and it's very, very heavy. I would guess this transformer by itself weighs as much as this whole unit does on its own. And this is just a transformer out of a Cyclops Super. And Cyclops has got a bunch of other parts within that unit. So that's why you pick up a Cyclops unit. It's like, geez, it's like 10 pounds. This transformer probably weighs about 5 pounds, give or take. This maybe f between 4 and 6 pounds on this transformer. And this unit on, probably weighs about 6, 7 pounds altogether. Maybe between 5 and 7 pounds altogether. Um, so, yeah, this transformer is pretty heavy duty. But, uh, I mean, see, it's got... Um, multiple layers you know there's there's a one layer there there's actually two layers to it uh I, I don't remember how this is exactly without testing it but two of the wires are one are one coil the one winding for the primary and the other two are the other winding so it has like two windings on the primary versus just one so that's how they when you get to the bigger units on the cyclops this is just an example but this other brands do it similarly as well they use a multiple core transformer inside although having like in stages have like four or five rows of coil on the inside plus they'll pot it in an epoxy like this one is so uh maybe a little bit different idea but uh setup but similar idea as this one 
but um, this transformer I mean it's pretty heavy duty so the transformer we use a single core transformer kind of like what this one is but a lot better built a lot more quality control on the stuff uh, better sealed off uh, and everything and it's a little bit bigger than this as well uh, it doesn't fit in the same spots why we have to bolt it to the case but um, I don't dislike the brand dislike the model I wish they would make a, a change to it or something uh, make an adaptive unit or put a better uh, quality transformer now the pri the secondary side where your fence and ground side that hardly ever goes bad it's almost always the primary side that goes bad on these things almost all the time I mean it doesn't even smell burnt but it's there's not it's not really burnt but it's, it's broken internally there's just a wine in there that popped apart they really can't fix these transformers yet to just replace them unfortunately this is how they are so but i just wanted to show you so if you've got one of these american farm hooks 120 miles or a zariba blitzer red snapper fi shock is another brand 100 mile they're all the same just different stickers on the inside i mean we'd be happy to take a look at them for you one of these days we'll make a, a little more detailed repair video on us bolting our transformer in there and how to put it together that way if you want to do the work yourself you can but when the transformer goes if it's not clicking as long as lightning didn't bother it usually the transformers one issue and then usually have a other issues over here on the board somewhere and the only way to know what's wrong is you gotta test stuff you can't just throw parts at it and just hope that you guessed right you gotta test things you can't just be the part scanning and oh i need a this and this and this and this and this and throw it all in there and it still doesn't work well he's wasted a bunch of time and money on, on doing all that stuff so you gotta test things you can't just play guessing game and get it wrong so we're going to plug this thing in So you hear it clicking right along. Now it does not have a light on. It doesn't, it doesn't flash a little light anymore. So if you like that light, <coughs> sorry. Put that about 8,000 or so. With this little analog gauge. Analog fence tester will throw the screwdriver across it or something to show you the spark it throws let me find something that won't shock me when I touch it by accident a screwdriver what the hell is I got everything but a screwdriver sitting around here oh man bench is a mess right now uh, ow. Man, I was looking for earlier um, I got this big old hammer here I think it puts out a little bit more power too, comparable to the factory one. I want them to touch the hammer to one side, like the fence or ground up matter, and lean it over and get real close to the other terminal. Watch the spark it throws. So, nice, hard hitting unit. I mean, now the circuit boards for the most part are pretty reliable, they're kind of old school. Uh, in a sense, there's a little bit of a uh, digital parts on there, like a chip and uh, something else. But there, it's um, a pro microprocessor deal, a microcontroller. That's what they call it. Um, but uh, a lot of been using those for 20 plus years now on some of that stuff. Uh, so it's not like it's a new fango fancy, you know, computer thing. But it's uh, microcontroller has been on Finstarter for decades on some brands. But um, well, that's it for now. If you want to check us out, there are links down below in our description area of the video to our websites, fencerfixer.com's our website, Fencer and Fixer, is both spelled with an F as in Frank. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we appreciate that. <coughs> and until next time, we'll see you guys later on.